Hey, you Potter Than Hell junkies, this is Carl Kennedy from The Rods and Kennedy. You're listening to the Potter Than Hell podcast with the metal encyclopedias themselves. Steve, BC, BB, and Dylan on the keyboards. Crank it up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is your last stop on the crazy train of hard rock and heavy metal. So sit back, buckle in, and hang on. Here we go. Hello, Potter and Hellions. Welcome back to the Potter and Hell podcast. This is Steve, your host, and this week I am joined by... BB. And our keyboard player this evening is... Dylan. Or it could be daytime if you listen to it in the day, but yeah, that's when we're recording. It does come out in the daytime. Yes, it does. Anyway... Hi guys, welcome back. Hope everybody enjoyed our Grammys episode last week. I thought it was pretty cool. It's it's always good when we only really have, uh, what, we had 16 songs to listen to, right? Uh, it might have been 20. I think it was 20 because I think it was five apiece. Oh, was it five? five okay. Piece, 20, yeah. eh, well, <clears throat> that still wasn't too bad. Some good, some not so good, but mm-hmm. it was it was fun though. It, it's cool. It's cool guessing and I liked that. I thought I fucked up, but I didn't. When I thought that Slayer, when I when I thought that I read that Slayer won, but they actually didn't. They did not. The alphabetical thing kind of threw me off to uh, that. That's how they actually Q the X Files picked them. Conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, no shit for sure. Get uh, Murphy and Gilly or whatever. <laughs> no. What were their names? Mulder and Scully. Mulder and Scully. Scully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was close. I, Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I watched the show like three times. Fox I think. Mulder and Dana Scully. Dana Scully was was kind of hot though. Love the love the Gene redheads. Anderson. All right, so uh, we talked. To, well, we started to talk about it last week. Then I kind of put a, put the brakes on it. We wanted to talk about Ace's uh, Origins too. So um, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, what would you think, BB? I thought the songs that were good were really good, and then the songs that were bad were really bad. But I think it's more of Ace's singing than anything else, because musically, every song in this album, spot on fucking fantastic. There are some really, really good songs on here. Uh, A lot of the songs I, you know, like, I'm Down, like from the Beatles, I I wasn't very, you know, I, I didn't know that one. Uh, the politician I didn't know. Like some of these are, they're a little bit older than that genre that I kind of grew up with. So I kind of had a, you know, I still don't have my my vinyl. It's still somewhere between here and Long Island. But uh, so I kind of had to go searching like who sang what song because I didn't have anything. I didn't have the side the notes to read. But uh, some of, some of the songs are, are fantastic, and I don't understand what is the thing about. A bonus track. It's just, on the LP. It's on the CD. It's not really bonus. It's on yeah, there. It's not like it's, it's not a, like exclusive it's, to a version. Right. It's not or, like they used to do it like a Japanese version Japanese has version bonus would track have a of bonus whatever. track of yes, right. exactly. Yeah, Why is or, I don't know. All right. It was going to be eleven, but I'll throw this bonus track in for yeah. I, for I, you guys. Yeah, that is weird. Good point. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not down with that. I'm not down with that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I enjoyed it. I think the guitar work on the album is really good. I like the special guests that appear. I mean, it was great to have a break from Ace's singing, for sure, with Robin Zander and uh, Lita Ford. But I, th- whenever I listen to covers, I always compare them to the original. And for the most part, most of these color- covers don't quite stack up. I like the cover of I'm Down, but I like the original better. I do love the soloing in it. Never in my life I really enjoyed it. I think that was probably my favorite track because I really like the riff to it. But I uh, I came away liking the first volume better, I think, because I like the song choices a little better. I knew those songs more. Yeah. Just like you, I was I was a little perplexed by some of these. I mean, I knew Manic Depression from Hendrix, Jumpin' Jack Flash, of course, I'm Down, and Space Truck, and Good Times, Bad Times. Uh, the version of Lola is horrible, though. I, uh, <laughs> I had to point that out because his singing is just not good for that song. It doesn't, doesn't have the... That was Ray Davies that... With uh, the with Kinks, right? It was the Kinks, yeah. Yeah, so was not a fan of that. But. Yeah, then even 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 though we already Dylan and I kind of talked about this on the way down. Like the good times, bad time. There's a certain part in that song. I swear to God, like the recording of Ace's voice is like slowed down because it's like yeah, 
you're you're I think what, it's like, like the, you want to like slap him in the ass and say let's go alone. like you're you're slowing the song down. <laughs> I think it's the end part where he's doing that the the robber plant super slow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta say, there's no one on this show that bashes Aston more than me. There's fucking no one that does. But I I like this album. I I like I love the production on it. It's good. It's the good guitar well, playing is, is great, yep. and um, the drums. Especially on good times, bad times. Holy fuck. Awesome. That star just totally fucking knocks it out of the park. And he did a live thing last week on Facebook, and I just happened to have it on when he was there, so I, I tuned in. And um, and he was talking about the tracks on the album. Like uh, Space Truckin' and there was there was another song, too, that was... Um, that they recorded like in 2014 or something like that. That they huh. that they brought back and you know changed it, changed it up and stuff. But um, I I thought it was cool. I and I talked when we I don't know one of the Kiss episodes or maybe all the Kiss episodes. I talk about Kiss not being fun. This is a fun album. Yeah. You know I like Space Truck and he throws in Space Ace Truck in and Hey Curly and uh, <laughs> Where's Jan Dal or something like that. I'm down in the end. He yells Kick out the fucking jams. Did a little MC5 there yeah, at yeah. the end. And uh, Jeremy Asbrock plays the solo on Good Times Bad Times. Fucking fantastic. Um, never in my life. Now I can name two mountain songs. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good mountain song. Yeah, but it's it's very Mississippi Queenish type it, yeah, riff it has though. That, I mean yeah. you could if. That like groove. It, yeah, it, it has that 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 sound to it. Um, I'm down friggin' rips. Him and uh, John Five plays solos with him back and forth on that. They just, that end of that song just fucking tears it up. Yeah, I think I like Aerosmith's version the best of that song though. Hmm. It's a good um, version. It is. Steven Tyler's yeah, really um, perfect for that yeah. that kind of vocal. Yeah. Leo Ford's vocals are cool and Jumpin' Jack Flash. That was always one of my favorite Stone songs. Uh, the Politician. That song is fucking terrible. The song <laughs> itself. <laughs> I won't even go back and listen to the original song. I guess it's a Cream song. Yeah, I, I guess. So. Absolutely fucking horrible, unlistenable. I like Lola. I even got used to the cola. I hear it. <laughs> That's I the cola. Yes. And I'm used to yeah, the one that, like, you know, bottoms out his voice. Hey, it's better than cola. <laughs> um, good. 30 Days in the Hole. I fucking hate that song. <laughs> Except for this version. Yeah. Like, I hate when, I Robin mean, Zander. everybody fucking t- covers this everybody song. Does it, yeah. um, Mr. Big does it. Um, there was just another covers album that came out recently that had this on there. Yeah. Terrible. Robin Zander sings it, and it's, it's, it has a totally different feel to it. I wish Robin me. Zander was on the whole album. I know. Yeah. If he sang the whole album, Oof. that'd be fucking awesome. Uh, Manic Depression. I go into Manic Depression when I hear this song. This is one of the worst songs ever written and fucking recorded I, in the history of fucking music. That, that is just wow. emphatically not true. It wow. Is so the hate even, mail can go to. Even fucking Bruce Kulick cannot save this fucking song. It's terrible. It is the most disjointed, <laughs> shitty song. I fucking, I'm not a fan of Hendrix anyways. But this song is fucking... The only one that could have been worse is All Along the Watchtower. That another one oh, fucking come on. sucks Well, that's ass. a Bob Dylan song originally. I don't care. It still blows. Um, <laughs> the song Kicks, that's okay. Not bad. Uh, we Gotta Get Out of This Place. That's I like that. That's a cool song. It's fun. And what do you guys think of the version of She? It's a thousand times better. It's this is good. the best song in the album. I think it's better than the original. It's really cool. And I like they do the... It's still from the end of... Still from the end of the best song. Let, Let me, me know. know. Yeah, and it's you know they do it on. They do it, that's know. what they do yeah. live. You Could know, have they, had Robert Zander, Ford do the dual vocals. Oof. Oh, that would have been cool. Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, except for the politician and manic manic depression and maybe kicks, um, I think it's I like it. It's fun. And actually, it was weird. You guys, Dylan, I think you said you liked Origins Volume One better. I like the song choices better. See, I like the song choices better on this one because I, I don't like Street Fighting Man. That's eh. White Room is eh. Okay. Spanish Cast- Castle Magic, another fucking Hendrix. Terrible song. Fire and Water, not good. I don't care if Paul Stanley's on it or not. But it has Cold Gin. It has. Well, it has, more, it has more kiss on it. Has it. That's the, why. It has one of the best well, versions of why. Parasite but as, ever but put as far, to, But as put far as uh, like covers, not including the kiss songs, it's, okay. I don't know, you know, like Wild Thing. Oh. Can you can you can you never ever hear that song again and be fucking happy? You know, hey, that um, was Rick Wild Thing Vaughn's uh, walkout song. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I I like it. I, I think I think it's good. And actually, BB, I got my vinyl, but I didn't open it up yet. But some people were posting they ordered the gold and they got some purple. Looks Whoa. like like a grape jelly color or something. Jesus. 
Well, what happened, I kind of like got behind the eight ball and kind of forgot about it. And Ace on Facebook kind of did this thing. If you if you go to, I think it's like Looney Tunes music shop and it's somewhere in Long Island. He signed like a hundred um, of the CD, CD in, in, yeah, inserts and he signed it. Mm-hmm. And, and if you bought, if you were one of the first ones to buy either the CD or the vinyl from that place. You got one of them. You got one. So I got one. It just so probably got held up. Because well, some somewhere. people have been getting them. I've seen some people posted a couple okay. of those. So uh, maybe so by the time cool. you guys hear this next yeah. week, BB will have his, right. his album. So, um, yeah, very cool. I, I enjoyed it. Um, so uh, what are we listening to, guys? Uh, BB, how are you? What do you got going? Uh, I'm kind of old school and hey, Sammy Hagar, but I, I kind of went back to the um, – Hagar Sohn, um, the H H S A S album. That's just a, such a great album. Then I found myself wormholing into a bunch of live videos from from the, their concert that they did. Yeah, just so fantastic. Hagar Sohn is such a great guitar player. Aronson and Shreve. I never, I've never actually seen him play before live with my own two eyes, but. Watching those videos on 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 YouTube today, really really good. They were good. Yeah, I, I had that um, when that came out. I saw my original vinyl. That that's a good album. Like yeah. Valley of the Kings is fucking cool. Definitely, definitely cool. underrated album. Cool. How about you, Dell? I did some homework from the Grammy episode and decided to try Lincoln Park out again because, as I had said, I wasn't a big fan of them growing up. I thought they were overrated and. Wasn't it just wasn't gelling with me? But I decided to listen to their first two albums, Hybrid Theory and Meteor Meteora, and I actually kind of like them. <laughs> they're they're pretty good. Uh, some of the some of the lyrics are a little cringy, but I I like the the backing track. The the instrumentals are like parts are really cool. But I uh, definitely think I I might become a Linkin Park fan if I give myself enough time to listen to them. So oh, all right, cool. Yeah, I guess. Um, hey, you said you liked that song. No, I, I did. I did. I, I, you know, like I said, it, it was that piano version that, that kind of threw me off. And then when you played the other one for me, like, oh, it's that song. Um, see, it's just like if they did an acoustic BB, it would fuck <laughs> it up. Come on. <laughs> um, me, I was listening to today. Um, I put on the Heaven and Hell album, the live at the Radio City Music Ooh, Hall one. Good one. Um, fantastic show, and it was. Right, it was one of the early ones they put out because it was right before they recorded the show. Right before they put out the album, right? No, it was before they put out the best of Black Sabbath, the oh, okay. Dio years, because there were the so three songs, the, yeah, the three new songs on there. The, the Devil Cried, and there's two other ones. Yeah, um, you know, but it's it's fantastic, and I remember um, BC and I we we saw Heaven and Hell play, and it was fucking fantastic. And and BC couldn't be here tonight because. Uh, we got messed up at work, so he was my relief tonight. So, um, so he's listening to the plaintive sounds of Carbondale at night. Yes, he is. Um, so now tonight we had uh, it was a no homework um, episode we're doing here tonight. I, I literally told these guys what we were going to do for the episode like an hour before, just so they could be a, 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 a tiny bit prepared. But um, we still had to do homework. <laughs> yeah, but not really. You, didn't, you could have just did them off the top of your head. Like, BB, he's got, like, four lines written down. That's all you really needed to do. And I'm sure you have yours punched in on your phone. And and BC gave me his. What I wanted to do was I wanted to just talk about concerts. You know, our, you know they could be a favorite concert. They could be uh, a memorable concert for a certain reason. Uh, you know, like something that you associate with a, you know, a good time or whatever. And I just wanted to do that, like like four concerts a piece, and we'll just, you know, talk about them. And if it's a show that someone else was at, we can we'll just discuss them. And you know, you guys out there, give us give us your four top concerts that you went to, and um, just you know, I just wanted to to do something different, something you know, you know, spontaneous. Well, for for these guys, anyways, for not having much prep time. So so we didn't really have to listen to anything, so you just kind of had to remember back. So uh, what what'd you, th- what'd you guys think when I when I threw the topic out there? I, I had a guess that we were going to be doing something live-related since you you put out what, what kind of hidden gem we should pick. So I was starting to think maybe he's going to ask about concerts, and I was I was brainstorming some, some different shows that I remember really well, good or bad. Uh, there will be some... 
kind of bad, but I I thought it was a cool I thought it was a cool thing. I wish I would have known beforehand, but that's just me. You know, I'm a I like being prepared. I don't like coming to class without my without having my homework done. You know, I was a, I was a <laughs> but the dog really did eat my homework. I, swear. I was a close to straight A student, so I always I I like having having to sh- like work to show. Right. Know. See, where I was not a straight-A student, I was more used to flying by the seat of my pants. Because, <laughs> actually, I didn't even I, – I, I thought of the idea, like, a couple weeks ago, and I told you guys we were just going to do a surprise episode, and I really didn't until, like, two hours ago sit down and write the ones I'm going to do. So mm-hmm. it's not like I – Oh, see, he had two hours. We only had an hour. Yeah. Well, I, I had a couple weeks, but I didn't do anything <laughs> with it. Um, so uh, what do you think, BB? Uh, yeah, I – I'm uh, I'm I'm on I was on the fence. I like oh well, I'm thinking well why do you wait so long? Like why 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 kind of just go off the cuff? But I kind of understand because you know you just want to you know kind of just think back of the great concerts because there's so many of them, and that's almost kind of why I'm a little glad that we did this off the cuff because you could probably pull your hair out trying to think of some fucking amazing concerts we went to because there's so fucking many of them. Trying to narrow it down. So it was one of those first four things that just popped in my head. Boom, 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 run it down, and I'm not going to change it. And and then we can, you know, it's nice because there's a couple that you guys weren't there. So, right. you know, it, it's it's. I think my list will work out perfectly. All right, cool. Uh, who wants to go first? Anyone? We didn't even get a chance to pick out of the hat tonight. We just literally nope. hooked up the microphone, sat down, and started recording. Said, Let's go. Doesn't matter. Whatever you think. Um, You're running the show. I'm going to go first. I'm going to go first today. Um, my first show I want to talk about is um, got to see uh, the first time I got to see Wasp at uh, Tanks in Scranton. And I've talked about the venue. It's the venue that has the pole in the middle of the stage. And it was on the, um, the Hell Dorado tour, which was uh, BC and I went to it. And um, and actually, Dylan's aunt, my sister in law, went to the. Uh, was that back when they were going out? Yes. Yeah. 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 BC actually dated my sister in law. He could have been my uncle. He could have been. <laughs> <laughs> and things work out for a reason. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, but it, it was cool. And, and I looked up the set list real quick, and I don't think that it's correct. But they only have 11 songs on there. But they did a full show. Hmm. So um, they did Hell Dorado, Inside the Electric Circus, Chainsaw Charlie, Wild Child, Love Machine, Animal, Fuck Like a Beast, Sleeping in the Fire, Damnation Angels, Dirty Balls, The Real Me, and I, I Want to Be Somebody. I mean, that may be actually all they did because I know um, Chris Holmes stretched out the, the solo in Sleeping in the Fire. Oh, my God. I thought my fucking head was going to explode. It was so cool. And Blackie had, I don't know if you guys remember, he had that microphone stand and had the the motorcycle handlebars on it and it was on this like big fucking spring and he got going back and forth on it. like he was i think that the the way that they had to do the stage was they had to have the people far enough away in the front so that he didn't hit the people in the audience when because i mean he was going to town on that fucking thing so i don't know how he was even able to stand it was Stand on that, because BB, remember back at Russell Park, they used to have those little animals that were on the springs. Oh, the springs, right? Yeah. And those motherfuckers got going. You could actually, hit the and like, yeah. And so, like, it was like that. It was like one of those friggin', you know, playground things that you will never ever see in this lifetime again. But like, I was like, holy, and like, there'd be certain parts of songs, and he would just go to fucking town. And it was, uh, I think it was Mike Mike Duda on. Uh, Stead Holland on drums and Mike Duda on bass. Mm. Where's the rest of the band along with Chris Holmes? I mean, it was just an absolute fantastic show. And actually, the date was March 2nd of 2000. And so that was just a, a, a fantastic time. It was cool. Uh, very intimate venue. BC and I almost got in this fight with this this huge guy there. And we just kind of, you know, walk, walk, walked away. Because we did a lot of pre-gaming before that show. <laughs> so we're like, you know what? Let's, let's not get into trouble and get thrown the fuck out of here. But it was just a, a fantastic, one of those memorable, like, intimate shows. I mean, like, what, you know, you're, you're 25 feet from Wasp. Um, not exactly in their heyday, but they were still pretty popular. And you got to see them do a pretty good mix of their, their career up to then. You got to see, you know, classic songs from the first album, you know, uh, from the last command. Because I, I know they did, I know they did Blind in Texas. So this is not a 
a full Texas. <laughs> yeah, this is not a full set list because I know they did Blind in Texas. So, um, so there's 11 songs that are on the set list FM, and actually there's no set list from our show. This was like two more shows up because they're you know how sometimes they'll not have a set list for a certain show, mm-hmm. but this was. Uh, uh, the, the core of what they did but I do remember they did Blind in Texas so it was I know they did more than 11 songs but I mean it was just so cool to see them do that you know you got songs from you know even like they did The Real Me but I think they did like maybe Headless Children too so they they had a pretty good mix of, of what they were up to at, at the time and um, but I mean it was just it was cool as fuck to see these guys play and um and Hell Dorado was I don't know if you guys are you familiar with that album at all, baby? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I know we did yeah. I know we did the the Wasp uh, Deep Tracks one, but I mean that's just a fantastic album. That harkens back to you know, they it was Fun Wasp. We talked about that it was Fun Wasp and then Serious Wasp, but that was a fun wasp album right. thrown in there in the mix. In between the the serious wasp and, and the what the religious wasp I guess that you have now. But it was just a fun, fun time. And I know, um, you know, you guys weren't there. I was there with BC. But, I mean, it was it was just freaking fantastic. You know, I've, I don't think I've ever actually seen Wasp live, thinking about it. I'd say, no, you probably had. Because there was I, only, there were. The only place I would have saw them was M3. And I don't think I was at no. the show. Oh, you, were, BC Ooh. was the fucking show. Oh, BC night. was the show. Yeah. Um, actually, I had four opportunities to see Wasp. And I have only seen them twice. <laughs> the first, Blackie likes the. He fucking loves to bone me. Because yep. the, the first time <laughs> it was supposed to be rock. Um, Armored Saint, Metallica, and Wasp were touring. Yeah. And we got a fucking blizzard and they canceled the show. Didn't get to see that one. And then we saw them at Tinks and then they were supposed to play down at uh, Crocodile Rock in Allentown and they canceled. Pissed. And then we saw them at M3. So right. I had like four opportunities to see them, only seen them twice. But I'm glad I at least did get to see them. So. Um, so they were freaking fantastic, and and they were they were still really good when we saw them at M three. Of course, yeah. you know that's when Blackie booted uh, Kicks being the closing band of the night. Kicks, right, you know exactly. they had to, the they Friday had to be the, they had to be the headliner for the night. So um, much of the chagrin of the the Kicks army that is you know that's their home territory now. <laughs> so uh, all right, uh, Dylan, how about you? What do you got? Uh, this was tough because it, there's now a bunch of shows flooding to my head. Because you said certain keywords. See, if you just wrote the of, four of them down and threw, know, now and threw I'm, now the pin away. Now I'm second guessing because I'm don't thinking, second guess. Go I'm thinking, what if somebody else talks about the same show? Then I'm double dipping, and you know I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to go with the show that probably nobody else is going to pick. Uh, probably my favorite concert of all time uh, when we saw Foo Fighters at City Field. The date was uh, July 16th, 2015. It was for their Sonic Highways World Tour. Uh, that was the album where they recorded one song in each different city, which is really cool. So, and they had different um, people from the city be part of the song. Like Joe Walsh was in one in Arizona or wherever the hell he's from. Uh, Rick Nielsen was one from Chicago, uh, but and they had like a documentary with it that won some <coughs> some awards. But this was a really great show, and uh, it was it was fun to go see because it was you and me, and we. Like we hopped on this show on a lark. I was I like really, a, a week before. I was huge in the Foo Fighters at the point at that point, and uh, you knew that, so you got tickets with uh, Jen and and Ra and uh, uh, Joe, Joe Manjiri. Manjiri. Yeah, uh, and it was we just hopped in the car. We all jammed in. Uh, of course, you were shotgun, so you didn't have to jam in with us. It was me, Ra, and Jen in the back seat, all crammed in like sardines. And of course, Ra was messing with Jen and like. You know, knocking into her, so it was not a not the best ride. But once we got there, we we ate at a restaurant that was on the, like at the park and mm-hmm. in the stadium. Would, yeah, you had ordered a Biller Light, and they had run out of Biller Light, and you <laughs> you gave such a hissy fit. It was a real Karen I was moment pissed. for you. Well, that was after <laughs> <laughs> that was after I drank about twelve beers too. Yeah, it was a real it was a real Karen moment for you there, Dad. That uh. You were very much like <laughs> that. It was a that fucking person. Thursday. How do you run out of beer on a Thursday? They had the show. They literally had a show the You're night before. You're in New York City. You could get beer. They the Foo Fighters played there the night before. Their fucking inventory guys should have been fired. And it was a. Uh, it was. <laughs> we got general admission tickets, and it was all in the. We were in the outfield. The stage oh, right was center field. Uh, like towards the back of the field, and we and like everybody was in there. But then there were seats behind home plate. 
which is really confusing to me because they paid more money than we did. Right, because I I was talking to uh, one of my one of my friends. Uh, her name is Ellen Simon, and she's a huge Foo Fighters um, person. I was talking to her about the show on uh, chatting on on Facebook, and and they paid like a couple hundred dollars for their tickets. That's insane. And they were far away. We were literally. Twenty five feet from the stage, maybe. Yeah, and they had a they had an outcropping in the stage. Yeah, so and when we he were, came out on when the we when the right chair there. went out on the on the conveyor yeah. belt, he was even closer. <laughs> that was when Dave had broken his leg, so it was the he was in the leg. he was in the, the, the big the throne, throne with the guitar he had the oh, guitar yeah. next. Throne. So awesome! It, like it was a once in a lifetime thing to see for sure. And Axel ended up borrowing that throne when he sprained something on uh, for Guns N' Roses. Swinging, when yeah. he was singing for, was it ACD? It might have been for ACDC. Yeah, I think it was ACDC. I think it was, it was for ACDC. Yeah. But it was it was perfect show. You, we can get where we want. The t-shirts were 20 bucks, which you never see at concerts. It's no. usually 40 at least. That's the misprinted ones in the parking lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the bootlegs. <laughs> Uh, and, and the cool thing was that they had shirts that were unique to the venue. So they had a shirt that looked like a Mets shirt. Yeah. But it was, oh, it was, it was like, oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. It was really, really awesome. And the opening band was Royal Blood, two-piece band that I always talk about on this yeah. podcast. Kicked ass. They had such a full sound. Drummer looked like he was going to beat the shit out of somebody. Angriest looking um, man I've ever seen on stage. They did a cool cover of Iron Man uh, in between their one song, Out of the Black, which is their opening song on their album, but they closed with it which I think is a really cool thing because it's a good opener or closer. And Foo Fighters came on, and they were phenomenal. They they knew exactly how to how to play it. They opened with Everlong. They went into Monkey Wrench right after that. Like they hit, they got all of their all of their hits out of the way. But they also did a cool covers medley when they were introducing each of the band members. Uh, whenever a band member get introduced, they would pick a song. They would they would play the first verse and chorus of. So they did Detroit Rock City. A jailbreak from Thin Lizzy and School's Out uh, to introduce themselves, which is really cool. They did a full cover of Under Pressure, and they did a full cover of Breakdown by Tom Petty, which was fantastic. And the really cool thing that went over our heads at the time, but looking back, it was really cool. Two of the guys from the Bad Brains came out, and they played two songs with them, which is really, really cool. They were the worst songs all night. Well... Uh, they were terrible. <laughs> they, uh, That's when the dickheads in front of us started to mosh or something. Yeah, I, they, started, they knocked me on my ass. <laughs> there were only like three mosh pits in the entire place, and one of them was right in front of us. But uh, it was it was really cool to see them. They they show such a reverence for the people that influenced them with doing the covers and inviting people on stage. I know they had Chad Smith uh, drum mm-hmm. for them at one point. Stevie Nicks joined them on stage a couple times. Uh, Paul Stanley got up and did Detroit yeah. Rock City with them in Los Angeles. Like they they really love to showcase what inspired them. And honestly, it was my favorite concert because they played all the songs, I, well, most of the songs I wanted them to. Uh, they they were completely on point. Uh, Dave sounded great. Plus, he had the, the, the throne. So that's like a once-in-a-lifetime thing that nobody else is going to be able to say they did. They even had a shirt that said the Break a Leg Tour that right. I got, mm. uh, that I still have. Which, <laughs> and the L's were casts, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, the L was the cast that he, that yeah. he has. Uh, <laughs> but it was it was a fantastic experience, and uh, the ride home was horrible, though. That yeah. was a four-hour was, ride home. It was, the ride home sucked. It, it yeah. doubled. Like, the only two parts I didn't like about that concert was, A, the Bad Brain song, and getting knocked on my ass. There, I put them together. <laughs> and then their two, two, he did this acoustic part, which, yeah. you know I'm not a f- And it was like my favorite. It was my even, hero and my hero, times like these. And times like these, my favorite Foo Fighters song uh, out of out of the like six that I know. All right. And they did it acoustic. I'm like, you fucking kidding me? <laughs> but <laughs> he had a broken leg. <laughs> and and I literally knew maybe five or six songs besides the the covers that they did parts of. Uh-huh. And it's it's in my top ten concerts. It was fucking fantastic. They they blew it away. Yeah. And I always said after that show, I'm like, holy fuck, what a show. I can only imagine what the show's like when Dave Grohl is mobile. Yeah, he's a, he's a you fantastic know I mean? front man. He had more charisma yeah. in the throne than most front men do, full, fully fully legged. Right. <laughs> it's like me, BB. I do my best work on the throne. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, BB, what do you got for your first one first? Uh, well, you brought up Tinks. So uh, the one on my list from Tinks I wrote down was... When Ronnie James Dio played at Tinks back in June 17th, 1997, uh, he was on tour for the Angry Machines tour. Uh, there was Dio, there was Tracy G on, on guitar, 
Uh, Vinny Apice played drums and um, Jeff Pilson. Jeff on Pilson bass. on the bass. But uh, what a great set list they had. Uh, they opened up with Jesus, Mary, and the Holy Ghost, straight through the heart. Don't talk to strangers. Holy Diver, Heaven and Hell. Then they then they did a, a song from Angry Sheen's Double Monday. Fantastic song. Stand up and shout. Um, Hunter of the Heart, Mistreated, Catch the Rainbow, Last in Line, and then of course he has to close at Rainbow in the Dark. But for for me growing up with Dio, you know, remembering all the way back from 1986, I just never expected to be like you said, like 30, 25 feet, 30 feet, and he's right there, you know. And it was just just mind blowing to see him in such a small club. You know, it was probably maybe two, three hundred people there, if that. It was one of one of the first mind blowing experiences I had seeing Dio because I was such a big fan of his from from day one. You know, and then going back through his catalog and then him playing all these songs that I remember playing in my room. But uh, just a great time, great energy, great crowd. You know, we probably had a couple of drinks that night, but uh, that was that was one of the first ones that actually came to my head. And I was like, well, I know Stephen BC were there, so I figured that would be a great one to kind of piggyback off you since we already talked about Tinks. But what a great show that was. Yeah, and and that was probably one of the first shows that you went with us. Probably. Because I don't, like, I, like, I remember we've we've seen, like, like, we saw Jackal there. Like, we saw a couple Kiss tributes there. Like, I don't, right. I'm not 100% sure right. where... Where that yeah. fell, but that's early ninety seven. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a great show. I, I mean, it was cool because Hoover said he said that he has the like the bootleg from that show right. too. Yeah, so I'll have to get that Hoover. We we need that. Yeah, we need, we need, need that bootleg. We need that bootleg. Bastard. Yeah, fantastic show. It was great. Um, and and it sucks now because like that place is like a fucking dance club. I think it's, now it's it called it levels, something? and each level there's an all ages level. There's a twenty one and over level. There's a level for shows. So it's we we'll have to go to the senior levels. citizen level. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, in the basement. It's, you take it's, the elevator. And okay. back, back in the '90s and early 2000s, that was that was the place. That's where Weezer played there. You know, there's so like just like even like to that genre of just think of the bands that went through that little club yeah. that only fit. Oh, absolutely, 300 people. Cheap Trick played there. Godsmack played there. There were uh, just so Godsmack many before they were big, right? Yeah, they they had. Everybody played there. I mean, but that was cool because that was in the night, and it was in the nineties. Yeah. So it was when you didn't have these bands playing these arenas anymore, and and they were more accessible to to us that stuck with that kind of music. Right. Storm played there in two thousand nine. Uh, I mean, yeah, there were. I mean, there was just a shitload. Like I, said, I remember D. Snyder playing there. After, you know, after when he when there was a guitar solo gone, he go over to the side of the stage and spray his hair with water. <laughs> Jones is <just> really <laughs> weird. The mighty yeah. mighty boss tones. Yeah. So I mean, tanks was tanks was happening. Time. We saw Rat there. Yes. When they were uh, actually, we saw Rat <clears throat> when John Karabi was the rhythm guitar player in Rat. Oh yeah. And then we saw them again. We saw them twice there. They, we saw them on 99 right. on the Rat album tour because remember they did Love Sick. Right. They were only a four piece then. It was Stephen Piercy, Warren D. Martini, Robbie Crane was on bass, and Bobby Blotzer on drums. Well, then when we saw them with John Karabi, Robbie. it was John Karabi, Robbie Crane on bass, Warren Jizzy Pearl singing. Remember when Jizzy oh, Pearl was Jim, in Rat? Yeah, that's right. The and, that little, um, little window. And that's Bobby right. Blotzer. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it was it was I mean we've seen a, a shitload of bands there. Tinks was Tinks was happening. Anthrax, uh, typo negative, man. Slipknot, wow. Slipknot in '99. So that was <laughs> that was like really first Slipknot. album. That was first right? album, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So all right, cool. Um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to my next show, and this is probably my my second major concert that I went to. What's that? Major award. It's a major. It's award. got a major award, and it's. Um, I saw Van Halen on the 1984 tour. Autograph opened up for them before they got booted off because they thought Steve Lynch was uh, out eddying Eddie, out out tapping tapping Eddie. (laughs) Um, I remember we went down on a bus trip, and it was like this bus trip was like fucking Animal House on wheels. I don't think there was anybody on that bus over 21 except for the driver. There were the the huge bottles of Jack going up and down the aisles. (laughs) 
I wasn't though because I was never really a pot smoker. Everyone's smoking pot, and I, I think you you could just literally just walk up the aisle on the coolers to go to the bathroom in the back. <laughs> and um, it was fantastic. I was a I was a sophomore in high school. <laughs> we were all fucking lit up. <laughs> so we get there. Autograph was freaking excellent. I remember. Uh, I remember the drummer with the with the big mane of red curly hair playing, and then uh, you know like Van Halen came on like that was the point when um, Van Halen was it they were our it band and it was um, I want to say it was it was me Robin Dugo win I I think actually my brother was on that on that bus as well we had a fantastic time the bus ride was as memorable as the as the show was because of just the, the crazy shit that was going on on the bus. But the set list was was fantastic for for the 1984 tour. They opened with Unchained, Hopper Teacher, but like like really, Alex needed a drum solo on the fucking third song of the thing. Um, <laughs> on Fire, Run with the Devil, Little Guitars, Cathedral, House of Pain, Michael Anthony jumping up and down on his Jack Daniels bass, Jamie's crying, I'll wait. Keyboard, oh keyboard solo with Dave doing his uh, twirling his swords or whatever the fuck he was doing. Um, I'll wait. Uh, I said, I'll wait. Then it was the keyboard thing. Everybody wants some girl gone bad, BB. Whoa, 1984. Man. Then they did jump, uh, like, and then they did like an 85,000 minute fucking guitar solo. Um, Pretty Woman, Panama. And then they went off and they came back with You Really Got Me. Then they went off again. Then came back with that. Uh, remember at the end of Women and Children First, they called Girl. Da, 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 da. They came out with that and then they did Ain't Talking About Love. Wow. So, I mean, it was just a, a, a fantastic show. And I remember um, coming home, we were coming up the Pennsylvania Turnpike, and we got off one of the rest areas where they have the, the restaurant and everything, and they had the kiosks, and, like, everybody was, like, stealing food and fucking... Uh, two guys that were on the on the bus, two, well, they were a year ahead of me in school. Remember they used to have the turnstiles in there? They fucking right. pulled two turnstiles out of the floor. Of Holy course. shit. We get back on... We're, we're all back on the bus... And we're getting ready to pull out. Two buses pulling, like two tractor trails pull in front of us. And one pulls behind us. We're like, uh oh. <laughs> State trooper comes on the bus. Oh boy. He says, "Listen." He says, "There was a bunch of food stolen in there, and two turnstiles were pulled out of the floor." I'm going to come back on this bus in ten minutes, and he said, "I know there's not anybody over 21 on this bus." He said, "I'm going to come back." He said, "If there's not enough money." At the front of this bus to pay for the stuff here, everybody is going to jail. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We probably could have fucking bought six of them. I think mean, everybody <laughs> fucking emptied their pockets because I'm like, that's all I need to do is call my parents in yeah. fucking Allentown. Hey, I just got arrested. <laughs> you know? Can you come get me? Yeah. <laughs> and like everyone was shitting their pants. Those two did get arrested. Mm. I, uh, I don't know. I don't think they kept them, but I think they wrote them up and they had to go down there and go to court and pay damages and mm. shit. But it was like fucking scary, and then like it was quiet as fuck on the way home. And I remember someone had a boombox, and they played from the first Kicks album "Poison" and "The Itch" over, over. and over and fucking over again. <laughs> Re yelling like "Scratch the itch and take the fucking poison" by the end of the uh. trip. But it was it was it was fantastic. Like I said, the bus trip was as memorable as the show. But the show was fantastic. There's videos out there of the 1984 tour. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, however, however you want to look at it, the last tour with David Lee Roth of the classic era. But um, just fantastic, you know. And and like I said before, you're never going to come away from a show going, "Holy shit, did David Lee Roth sing fucking great tonight?" No, he's just <laughs> right. fucking showman. And it was great. And you know, despite what problems they had going on. At the time, it didn't show on stage because they, like every single video I've seen, looks like they're having fun. And I want to say that right around then, they filmed the video for Panama because our friend Tammy is oh, in right. the Panama in the, video. In the Panama video, right? Yeah. So I don't know if it was then or another time, but it was on that tour that they recorded that video, and she's in the video. Yeah. Hmm. So um, it was it was awesome. Yeah, I would have loved to see them in the heyday. I can just I can just imagine. I can it, just was, imagine it was the, just the, the ruckus. Yeah. yeah. The only thing it was just like overload on solos though. Like and that was right. big in, in the in the eighties and it's it's still a thing now, which I yeah. Just they they literally probably with the with the length of the Van Halen songs that they are, they it literally probably could have played eight more songs. 
if they didn't do the drum solo. Probably solos, back in the guitar day, Eddie's solo. guitar solo was probably yeah. 15, yeah. 20 minutes. Because Dave even had his when he was twirling the swords and all that shit. So, <laughs> like, they literally probably could have played probably eight to ten more songs. <laughs> But um, I mean, it was just it was. That fantastic. does not cover the price of admission, sir. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So that's my my second one. Uh, Dylan, how about you? What's your next one? Okay, uh, I'll bounce out the good with the. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the next concert I want to talk about is uh, Metallica. Uh, we saw them at Lincoln Financial Field, Philadelphia, PA, on the World Wired tour, May twelfth, two thousand seventeen. Um, did, were you going to talk about this show, Dad? No. Okay. Cool. So we uh, we were on the bus. We, t- we took a bus trip. It was me, you, BC. Carson met us down there, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Girth. Oh, Girth. Yeah, Girth was with us. Girth That's was right. With us. That's Girth. right. Girth. And we're on the bus ride, and I'm looking on my phone. I'm excited for the show. I'm looking at everybody's uh, Twitter accounts to see, hey, maybe they're talking about the show. Maybe there will be some cool stuff. And I see that... Uh, <laughs> Event Sevenfold says, like, due to uh, Sinister Gates, his wife having a baby, we will not be able to perform tonight. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I <laughs> wanted to see Event Sevenfold so bad, and now I'm not going to be able to. And I, I was thinking, okay, you know, maybe they'll extend the set times. That'll be cool. We might get some extra songs from each of the bands. Because Volbeat was still playing, who I was really excited to see as well. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Metallica. So we get there, and we're tailgating, and Carson has really shitty seats and our seats are pretty crappy as well we're up in the rafters the nosebleeds off to the side and we find out Carson got seats on the floor (laughs) and was right basically right up on the stage and he doesn't even like them (laughs) so we're we're up in the nosebleeds like we we have a five second delay for the bands uh uh Volpe was really good they had this cool Boxing ring set up, yeah. like the the ropes and everything Went around, around the whole the, stage, around yeah, the stage, cool. and they were really great. Uh, Rob Cragio, uh, uh, originally from Anthrax, was g- playing guitar with them at the time, and they were really great. Right, they, and and just interrupt you, what, when you were saying about the boxing stage, and and they used the whole stage, yeah, because they, they were, even used like the which is the uh, what the ego stage or whatever the fuck they call yeah. it that comes down into the crowd. Which is usually they were even of. using down on that. Usually that's oh. blocked off to the opening bands. Right. Yeah, like, so they had the whole stage. I was I was really huh. surprised that they were allowed that much stage because yep. usually the opening band they have this little box. Here's your box. Yeah. Do not step out. But they yes. they sounded great uh, on the five second delay that we had them. Uh, but it was really fun to to try and parse out what exactly the song was because the delay was almost no, bad we enough. That far back. Well, it was. It was getting to the point where it was almost bad enough where you were hearing the double uh, thing. But they were really good. Uh, around this time, BC started dozing off. <laughs> he, uh, and that's very odd for BC to yeah. doze off at a show. Yeah, there was there was a lot of tailgating on the way down. And I think he, oh, yeah. I think he, he had a little too much. And he was literally dozing off while they were playing. And... I'm a PC. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, we had to we had to refill our cool our like we couldn't take the big oh, yeah, cooler the on mid, the bus like midway. So we stopped at Allentown on the way down. So we had to refill our our bus cooler <laughs> from the other gone. cooler. <laughs> <laughs> we got down there, and then I I think I had Carson pick us up another case of beer to meet us down there with. That's true. Yeah, and wow. That was and of uh, course Girth, you know. Oh, of course. Well, that, that's why he, he should have brought his own keg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Volby goes off, and and I'm thinking, okay, maybe Metallica will have uh, an extra long set list. Instead, they do give an extra long set list to somebody, but they give it to a metal DJ. And oh, yeah. if oh, you don't know exactly him. what a metal DJ is, he plays metal songs but remixes them. So you'll have Cowboys from Hell with a, with some turnstile and action Ooh. going on and. <laughs> Mixing, mixing in with, with me Madonna, all night long and, uh, like a virgin, <laughs> and that was a very. It felt like it felt like a an hour log set list. Yeah, BC was out cold when yeah, that guy was, was playing. He was yeah. fucking yeah, out. He was out. Uh, and so this guy kind of took Avenged Sevenfold's. Yeah, I guess he was hour, originally supposed to be to, to play in between to the play bands, in between oh. just to have some background. But then he had a noise. whole set list, and then he, they gave him a whole set. But <laughs> yeah. you yeah, hear some hour. people start booing. <laughs> There were boos starting oh, yeah. in the crowd. Oh, yeah. I, I felt bad for the guy. Uh, yeah, I was like, let's go. He's trying to fill in for Event Sevenfold. Who, yeah, <laughs> he's not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. So then, then Metallica comes on, and they, they were great. It was for the Hardwired uh, to Self Destruct album, uh-huh. and the set list was fantastic. Uh, we we they opened up with Hardwired, uh, then they get Atlas Rise, For Whom the Bell Tolls, 
Creeping Death, and they switched Creeping Death with something fuel. Else, with fuel. Fuel. And we ended up with the good song. Creeping Death, baby. Oh, I almost <laughs> cried when they played that song. The song's fucking awesome. Then the Unforgiven, then Now That We're Dead, and they had a, a little drum thing in the middle where they, mm-hmm. where they all brought out these giant toms. And everybody in the band oh, right. was playing them. It was really kind of a cool thing. I remember you talk. I remember I had a search that because I remember your dad talking about that. Yeah. Then Moth of Flame, which is fantastic. Uh, Wherever I May Roam, Halo on Fire, which ha- then Kirk and Rob did solos, which you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, then they did Motor Breath, uh, which I think is also a song that they would switch out mm-hmm. with another uh, Four Horsemen, maybe. Might have been Four Horsemen or uh, No, no remorse. remorse. One yeah. another. Uh, First album uh, song. Which I would have taken either one of those. Uh, Sad But True, they dedicated to si- Sister Gates' as Newborn. Uh, <laughs> one, uh, Master Puppets, Fade to Black, uh, Seek and Destroy, then the, the Encore was Battery, Nothing Else Matters, and Enter Sandman. Uh, we were leaving towards Enter Sandman because we wanted to get back to the bus. Yeah. Make sure we had enough time to go to the bathroom before they got swarmed. But uh, it was a it was a good, well-played show, I'll say. But some of the circumstances made it a, just an okay show. Yeah. But the hang was great, the though. The hang was, was fucking awesome. When BC was conscious, it was really fun to yeah. hang out with him. <laughs> and, that, and, and that's also the, the ambiance of, of the show half the time, you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and I was uh, texting with, actually, even because they're, they're starting to send out the uh, the different things for the Monsters of Rock that's going to be on the island and that. And, um, and, and I've said it before. I'm about the hang. The music for me anymore is secondary. You see a great band, cool. You see a bad band, you know, whatever. But it's this, the the conversation, the shooting, the shit. On the Monsters Rock Cruise, we were in, uh, I think it was Schooner's Bar. There was like like eight or ten of us just all hanging together. Like, we, we skipped bands just so we could just shoot the shit. You know, right. it's fucking awesome. Um, all right, cool. How about you? What do you got next, BB? All right, well, since I copied off you from the Tinks <laughs> venue... According to my list, I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy off you again, and I'm going to talk about the Van Halen show that the three of us were at mm. in Bethel Woods, Bethel Woods, uh, September sixth, two thousand and fifteen. That was that long ago. Yeah. Really. Yep. Wow. You know, five years ago. No shit. Flying by. Fuck. But uh. Uh, funny, it, it starts out that, you know, like, hey, let's go see Van Halen. And, like, before you know it, like, all these people want to go. And uh, I had a, a friend of mine, uh, Yvette, Yvonne, actually, her husband is a, owns one of the bus companies from around here. Hmm. She's like, how many are you going to have? I said, I don't even know, between 20 and 40? I, I don't know. She goes, how about you just take $20 from everybody, whatever, if you get 20 or you get 60, just take 20 bucks and that'll we'll, we'll, that'll be it. I said it's probably going to be between twenty and, and probably thirty. So I, I don't even know the the real number we got. But so she gave us a piece of shit bus. Thank you, <laughs> Yvonne, for the most piece of shit bus me, uh, hooking me up. So we're we're going up the Bethel Woods, which is probably a, a, a fifty minute drive from here, and uh, we're probably not even ten minutes into the trip, and the bus decides the. Die. Shit the bed yep. and start yep. smoking <laughs> and uh, so there were there were some angry people there but you know like I said it's twenty bucks you don't have to drive and I I was just like the middle guy you know we rolled we rolled with sure the punches. we did because we pulled over we started drinking some more we shot the shit you know we made we got some good pictures of BC getting run over by a, a cop car <laughs> but once we got there you know and we still had time to party we still had a it seemed like we had a lot of time. Um, Because I honestly don't even remember. Do you remember who opened up? No. Because I honestly don't even remember. Well, wasn't it, um, I was going to say Billy Ray Cyrus, but it's one of those blues guitar guys. um, The guy that did Blue um, on Black. The the, the Shepard, Bill Shepard. Kenny Wayne Shepard. Shepard. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a tough one. But, you know, that was one of those, you know, it's like the hang. Like, you know, all right, we're hanging out on the side of the road, we're drinking, you're waiting for a new bus. So, you know, boom, the new bus comes, we get up there, and, and then we're still, we still have enough time to have a couple more in the parking lot. And uh, we get in there, and I remember the one thing, BC's like, I don't know, I don't know how BC had extra tickets, or he, the BC went, right? They went up there separate. I think. They weren't on the bus. They weren't on the bus. But for some reason, like, oh, I have two tickets. And they were, like, in the very last row of the... Inside park. Inside. And they were 
they were like expensive. I'm like, well, let me see. Let me see if I could just go on Ticketmaster and see what they're going for now because it's like it was like the day of the show. So then I kind of looked and there was it was probably 15 rows from the stage on the side and they were the same price for for BC's way in the back. I'm like I said I don't mean to be a dick, but I'm going to grab these. He's like, "Oh, no problem." I think he I think he actually sold them up there anyway. So uh so me and my wife were there and everybody else was kind of scattered. It seemed like everybody had their own tickets. They were all over the place. So as my wife and I are standing there, there's this probably section of probably row, I'm going to say row 7 to like row 20 of nothing but empty seats dead center of the place. <laughs> so I'm standing there, Van Halen comes on, and they come up with open, um, light up the sky they open up with. Yeah. So I'm like, I nudge her, I'm like, start moving. What do you mean start moving? We're going over there. <laughs> And, and my wife is like a rule follower. She went to Catholic school. She's like, we can't do that. That's not our seats. We're going there. So I kind of pull her over, and we are, we are like sixth row dead center for Van Halen, which is another mind-blowing thing. Uh, they open up with Light Up the Sky, Running with the Devil, Romeo Delight, Everybody Wants Some, Drop Dead Legs, Feel Your Love Tonight, Somebody Give Me a Doctor, She's the Woman, Chinatown, I'll Wait. So finally, Song 11... Everybody needs a break. Here comes Alex with his drum solo. Uh, then he come back in little guitars, dance the night away, beautiful girls, women in love, hot for teacher, in a simple rhyme, dirty movies, ice cream man, unchained, ain't talk about love. So song number twenty two, this is where they give they give Eddie his, his big guitar solo. Uh, then they come back out and they close out with You Really Got Me in Panama and they and they close out the show with Jump. But uh just to see Van Halen six rows back, you know, it's almost like the deal thing. You know, I never thought I would see Van Halen that close in my in my lifetime. And just, you know, how we did it, how we kind of skipped some seats, you know, going up there, drinking on the bus, having a good time. You know, Chris Yankowskis, who's been on the show a bunch of times, was on the bus. You know, we drank and partied with him, which was which was great. And it's just one of those, Van Halen, to me, was one of those bands that kind of, it wasn't Kiss. It wasn't ACDC. It was it now. You know, had, I always had, had this new band, and they are the party. And they and they brought it. They were fantastic, you know. And I always like I'm the guy who's I go both ways with Van Halen. That was just a great show. Like they, they, they the set list was amazing. They they brought out some songs from from the new album. Like it, it was just a great show, you know. And being so close again, like I said, it's just a great memory for me. And definitely, definitely a, a, a top five show for me, for sure. That was the show for me that cemented I will never be on the fucking lawn again, ever, <laughs> for any band. I don't give a fuck who it is. I'll pay $600 for a ticket before I'll be on the fucking lawn again. It wasn't too bad, though. I, 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 I can't do it. I, I remember us crossing, I over the, I won't. crossing over the hump as late as the sky was playing. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought that was such a cool op- way to open the show. I know. Such a, yeah. a different opener that you wouldn't expect. Yep, from their near-perfect album. Yeah. All right, cool. There's uh, a good trio of uh, concert experiences there from the, the three of us here. Let me read off. Let me read off BCs. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you two of BCs right now. Utah, give me two. Utah, give me two. Um, BCs' fir- very first concert was Crew opening up for Ozzy, 1983-84 tour wow. for the. Uh, uh, I think it was Bark at the Moon tour for Ozzy and shout out the Devil for Motley Crew. And he's also told me that his second one is the biggest concert he's been to was the Monsters of Rock in Philadelphia, which was Metallica, <laughs> Kingdom Come, Scorpions, Van Halen with Sammy, and Dokken. Oh, Dokken. And Dokken. And Dokken. Yeah, that's where BC said the guy was <laughs> laying in the, rolling around in the, the glass. <laughs> Metallica! Metallica! <laughs> Which would have been cool. Which Metallica with Van Halen, especially Sammy Hagar Van Halen. That's a that's an odd pairing right there. Right. Yeah. And I think it was was that eighty six, maybe eighty seven, eighty eight. Oh, eighty eight. So that would have been Injustice for All, right? Eighty eight, or maybe before that came out. I think he said that it was Cliff Burton, didn't he? That mm-hmm. he saw. So it was before Injustice for All. Yeah. So it would have been Master of Puppets. Master. Then. Right. Hmm. I think so. Let me double check. <laughs> 
yeah, we'll have to I'll have to look that up. So uh, so very cool. There's our things there. Our first three from our first two from each of us, including BCs, but he didn't get to talk about them because he's not here. But um, we got to throw your picks out there, BC. Uh, so our gym song for this episode going to stick with the live theme. I'm going to play uh, Queen's Rag Damaged from the Live Evolution album that was put out in 2001, and the song Damaged is from the Promised Land album that came out in 1994. To me, absolutely underlooked kick-ass deep track for Queensryche and the song is Damaged. Hidden gem time here, people, and um, we're gonna stick with the live theme for the whole show here. So, uh, BB, what do you got for us? Um, I'm gonna copy off you once again. I might as well just keep that ball rolling. All right, I got a hat trick. I think I'm not gonna copy off you the rest of the night because if never I do, it, never. Uh, after <laughs> the next two song, the next two play ones I, I talk about, 
I'll be shocked. But uh, I'm going to go with Wasp from their Double Live Assassin album that came out in 1998. I'm going to go with the song The Crimson Idol Melody. It's a 10 minute, 37 second song. It includes the Titanic Overture, The Invisible Boy, I Am One, The Gypsy Meets the Boy, The Great Misconceptions of Me. Uh, Blackie Lawless, we, don't, we talked about him before. Great, great melodic voice that he has. Crips Holmes on guitar, fucking fantastic. Uh, melts the, the strings with this one. And uh, the two guys uh, that are on this album are Mike Duda on bass and Stet Howland on drums and right. backing vocals. But, uh, yeah, great melody of that great Wasp album. Awesome. Yeah, that was from the uh, Kill, Fuck, Die tour. Kill, yep. And I was able to get that on vinyl. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking awesome. All right, Dylan, what do you got? Good pick, BB. My hand gem is connected to one of the picks that I had, uh, Foo Fighters. They came out with the album Wasting Light in 2011. And in conjunction with it, they performed the album in its entirety live from Studio 606. So there's a YouTube video that they officially release, Foo Fighters Wasting Light live from 606. Uh, this is what bands should do when they come out with a new album. Play it live all the way through, put it out there for people to hear. So they get two different versions of it, get to experience it. Uh, one thing that I really love from this performance that's only 49 minutes long, they do Rope, which is one of the songs from the album, but they extend out the ending into this awesome little jam session. Very, very cool part. So, Foo Fighters, Wasting Light Live from 606. All right, cool. Rope was one of the songs I liked from that album, too. Yeah, that, that album's my favorite Foo Fighters album, so. Yeah, and uh, mine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a, uh, they call it a mini live LP, um, except it's called Kaiozuku Ban. Kaizoku Ban. Kaizoku Ban. I'm sure I butchered <laughs> that name. Like, come on, just name it like Live in Japan or some fucking thing. Really cool, though. It's got six songs on it. It's only like 20 minutes long. It's got Metal Heart, Screaming for a Love Bite, Up to the Limit. Head Over Heels, Love Child, Living for Tonight. And it's it's very good. Still Udo Dirk, Dirk Schneider on vocals there. And Wolf Hoffman still has that, all oh, that guitar tone is fucking fantastic. So uh, there's our hidden gems. Check them out. Except Kaizoku Ban. Which translates to Pirate Edition or Bootleg. Oh, okay. Ooh. And uh, for the mini live album, uh, BB's got the uh, Crimson Idol medley from Double Live Assassins, Wasp, that is. And Dylan's got the uh, Foo Fighters uh, live in, uh, Wasting Light live in Studio 606. 606. So uh, check out those hidden gems there, and hope you guys enjoyed uh, Queensryche Damage from the Live Evolution album. And that's a fantastic friggin' album, too. That goes through all of the periods of Queensryche up to, um, like, the year 2000 when they came out with uh, Q2K, I think the album's called. Mm -hmm. Um, so very good though, like best songs from everyone. The only bad thing is, uh, no Christy Garmo, it's Kelly Gray on, on guitar there, but he he brings it though. It's, it's good. It still has that classic Queens ishness to it. All right, so let's get back into the shows, and uh, we'll we'll go with BB the first one this time. All right, probably my most memorable from Oh my God, this is mind blowing, amazing to Holy fuck, I'm gonna die is I have to talk about Woodstock 99. <laughs> How we got into this one was uh, one of our buddies that we used to play poker with bought a ticket to, to Woodstock. And then we're like, you didn't fucking buy a ticket to Woodstock. You're not going, blah, blah, blah. If you bought that ticket, why don't you bring it to the, to the poker game tonight? So uh, he brings it, and my buddy Chippy kind of hides it in a way, and we distract the guy who had the ticket and chippy scanned it on his computer so we have the front and back of this comp the, this ticket and we you know we give it back to the to craig who bought it and uh chippy and i decide to make fake tickets and go up to woodstock at like two in the morning and go on the like there was like I think there was like three or four entrances we went like in the the most obscure entrance that we could find and we just walked in with our, our printed tickets, and we perforated the edges and everything. Chippy changed the number, because back then they weren't scanning them. They were just looking at the at the bottom number, and all the numbers on the bottom were switched around. You stole a concert. <laughs> <laughs> I stole a $150 Woodstock 99 concert. 
So boom, there's probably 12 of us. We went all, all there was three cars of, of four guys in it. Boom, we go in, rip the ticket, go in, rip the ticket, go in, rip the ticket, go in. Like not even a, not even a blink of an eye. And it was just, it was just mind blowing it. They kind of tell you, well, you can sleep here in this area and you can sleep over here in this area. So we had a bunch of like crappy tents that we kind of made our own little little lean to little lean and uh got in there but it was just it was just one of those things that there were so many people there uh wikipedia says there are four hundred thousand people there but just just to see that number it was just mind-blowing it ran from july 22nd to uh july 25th it was up in rome new york it was on a, an old abandoned Air Force base. So the one long runaway kind of went right to the, the main stage. And, um, you know, and, and, I, and I can't specify enough what, like, a crazy time it was. It was like the shitters were overflowed. It was like 99 degrees. Bottles of water were five bucks. It was just, it, it, it was just great and scary and so many emotions for those three days but uh as i look through i look through the 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 people that actually played in some on, on these days so uh thursday was the day we in, we went up there late so we did not see any of these bands that were on thursday so they were it was more like a like they're, they're calling it a pre-show so we get up there thursday thursday night friday morning whatever way you want to look at it you know, get our tents going. So Friday the 23rd, Buck Cherry is one of the bands we see. Then the Roots, we talked about nice. the Roots last week. Roots the Roots were there. They were they were right behind them. Insane Clown Posse we saw. ICP. Another crazy, crazy mosh pit. Were you a, were you a juggalo for that performance? <sighs> I was I was kind of <laughs> moving. <laughs> I didn't want any part of that. They had their uh, own wrestling federation for a while. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you, some some of those people that were, I I, I can see why, because there was mosh pits and there were, it was, wasn't like a mop, mosh pit of like, you know, just pushing. There were like kicks and there were punches. And I, you know, yeah. you're looking at them like, really? Like, just, just enjoy the show instead of like beating the shit out of each other. But, uh, you know, let them do what they want to do. And then uh, they had another stage. So that was that was kind of like the main stage for the one day, and on the on, on the on the other stage they had live was on there, uh, Shell Shell Crow, nice, the Offspring. I remember the Offspring; they were really good. Corn Corn was was good, in in doubt it in Bush, Bush closed no, closed wow. the night on on the on the one stage. So Saturday, Saturday comes up, Everclear, Ice Cube, Kid Rock. Kid Rock is the iconic. Everybody threw like a bazillion water bottles in the air. If you, I don't, I don't even know what song it was. Maybe it was like the no. I don't even know what song it was. It was. Ba -ba. <laughs> I almost said the Nookie, but that's the no, other. That's Limp Biscuit. That's Limp Biscuit. But there, you, you can see the video. There's just bottles flying <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Limp Biscuit was not, did not help batters. Though. No, because they played later on that night. Yep. Uh, the Counting Crows. Dave Matthews, there you go, Dad. <laughs> Alanis Morissette, Limp Bizkit, Rage Against a Machine, fantastic. Yep, doubt it. Metallica. Poof. This was and like where's BC this with this was poof. when shit started to hit the fan. Like there was giant fires erupting and stuff. From what I heard. No, that's the, that's the next day. Is that the next day? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the next day. Saturday. Saturday. Saturday was mega uh, Metallica. That was. Oh, that's right. That was still good. We'll get here. We go. We'll get to Sunday. Uh, the side stage or the smaller stage, uh, Seven Dust, Collective Soul, Godsmack, and Megadeth. So then the main stage was uh, Willie Nelson, it's such the, a the Brian lineup. Setzer Orchestra, Everlast, Elvis Costello, Jewel, Creed, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. So... The main stage with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, of course, I'm over with the with the Megadeth. So it's kind of not, if the main stage is here, like the side stage is kind of over there. And all the bad shit is happening here. So we're in the middle of Megadeth, and they're just, it was just fantastic Megadeth show. And then my buddy actually came up and like, we got to go. I'm like, 
What do you mean we gotta go? They're burning the fucking place down. We gotta go. I'm like, what? <laughs> so as we kind of get out and around, I'm like, holy shit! What the fuck just happened here? I want to see fucking Megadeth. That was like the one band. Like, I want to see Megadeth. I can't wait to see Megadeth. And I think I was like four or five songs in, and we're like, Burp. <laughs> we're out of here. That's just wild. And thank God one of one of the guys who came with us did not drink because he's the one who drove my car home because I was. <laughs> in no, no way, shape, or form to drive to, to drive home, but just awesome. I, I knew you were going to bring that one up. I was hoping you would. Yeah, I kind of thought you just, would. That's cool. That's probably the Stadies descended uh, upon yeah, the concert. <laughs> so what year was that? Ninety nine. Ninety nine. So there's not going to be like a but twenty year old BB knocking on your door, is there? No, but it's funny. It's it's funny. It started it started July twenty second. That's Killian's birthday, <laughs> <laughs> but but not ninety nine. Okay. And uh, I was telling Tom from uh, the Shout It Out Loudcast is uh, they're doing it. I guess he was there as well, and they're doing a documentary that will be on Netflix soon about that whole oh really in, in, encounter. If you want to call oh, cool. it that. Awesome. So that'd All be right. cool to see. Cool. All right, Dylan, what do you got? Okay. I uh, don't know if I could top that. <laughs> I, I wish I had some, like, wild <clears throat> concert story that that I could follow that up with. But it's yeah, maybe you should have saved that for last. Yeah. This is going to be disappointing. <laughs> no, I'll be like, uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> um. I guess I'll go with kind of the, the most wild I've seen people. Uh. I'll go the the bull for my Valentine show at the cultural center. First time I ever saw blood on the on the floor after the show, because they were moshing like nobody's business on the on the floor. We were up in the balcony for Bullet, I believe. We were kind of looking down because we we started on the floor, and then it started getting a little rough during like Escape the Fate. So we moved up to the balcony for Bullet for my Valentine, and it was uh, it was Bullet for my Valentine, Escape the Fate. Black Tide, they were really good. They opened with the cover of Hit the Lights, I think. And it was just a, a really awesome kind of thrashish show. And honestly, that ballroom saw a lot of a lot of blood because the we also saw Megadeth and Exodus there. Mm-hmm. And that was my first wall of death that I saw. That was fucking awesome. <clears throat> I remember at one point, I think for for like the bullet, like BC went around in the pit once and he like came out disheveled. <laughs> like, what the fuck? It was a cartoon and the yeah. birds would have been flying around yeah, his head. Yeah, honestly. It, like, that's how I pictured it in my head. Was Carson with us for Bullet? No. He was at the Bullet one at, yeah, at in the, Strasbourg. Yeah, at Sherman, yeah. yeah. Which was much tamer by comparison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, the that that uh, that show at the Cultural Center, both of those shows, those were the first time I experienced mosh pits. Uh, also, Anthrax at Croc Rock. That was a huge mosh pit. That took up I the know. entire floor. Yeah. There was just like a lie to people holding on to the gate, and just the rest was <laughs> mosh pit. Like getting sucked into the vortex and yeah. getting flushed down the toilet. So that was my that was my first uh, brush with violence. Uh, so we'll say those two probably are my next they were memorable good. shows. Yeah, I was at both of those. They were freaking. They were they were really good. Yeah, everybody played really well. I remember liking Escape the Fate live, and then I listened to their stuff, and I wasn't as big a fan. So. They came off better live, I guess, but Bullet, I still like, even though their new album isn't the best. Yeah, so that's my that's my next show. I'll All say. right, cool. I'm going to go with uh, my next show is going to be, it happened May 1st, 1986. I was a senior in high school. Um, I pitched a, I believe, a one-hitter that day for my high school baseball team. Jumped in my girlfriend's car, changed my uniform on the way <laughs> up to Binghamton, went to see Aerosmith and Ted Nugent. And Aerosmith was on the Done With Mirrors tour. That is the comeback album for Aerosmith. I don't give a fuck when anybody says that is a fucking fantastic album. It didn't do near as well as Permanent Vacation, but that is a fucking awesome album. And um, first time I ever got to see Aerosmith, um, Ted Nugent opened up. He was on his Little Miss Dangerous tour, which I'm going to talk about later on, maybe. But, like, it was when... Joe Perry came back in the band, and was Brad Whitford out? I think with Brad Whitford, I think they had both guitar players were out. But they came back with uh, Done With Mirrors, and the set list was Rats in the Cellar, Mama Kin. BB's favorite, Big 10-inch record was yes. next. 
My Fist Your Face, Last Child, She's on Fire, The Hop, Walking the Dog, Red House they did from Hendrix. Now, that's a Hendrix song I don't mind when someone else plays it. <laughs> Lightning Strikes from the Rock in a Hard Place album, which is a fucking fantastic Aerosmith song. Um, Sheila, Walk This Way, Let the Music Do the Talking, Sweet Emotion, Toys in the Attic, Dream On, and Train Kept the Rolling. Just an absolute fantastic show, mix of their classic songs. And I like it then, too, because you didn't have the the ballady Aerosmith that you got in the late 80s, early 90s, the, you know, amazing and the don't want to miss a thing and all that fucking shit that you have to fucking sit through at an Aerosmith show now. But you had just the, you know, the only really one that's shitty is Dream On that you had to sit through then. But you didn't have all that new stuff. So you had a good mix. They did a great selection of songs from their newest album. and But they didn't, you know, dismiss the the rest of their you know their their catalog. Um, it was just a, a great great mix of both. There was no night in the ruts. No, there, there wasn't. There, I I don't think there was anything from uh, Draw the Line either. Now that I I mean, those I were the contentious years. For, so I can yeah they were yeah they were they <laughs> was when they were they don't even remember recording those fucking albums. Yeah. Um, but just a, a great and actually I wasn't a huge Aerosmith fan at the time. I I had picked up. Done with mirrors because um, my buddy Rob had he did have Rock in a Hard Place and that was with the replacement guys and there were some good songs and the Lightning Strikes was on there and so when you know they hyped it in the magazines and Hip Prater and Circus and all that that you know Aerosmith was you know the band was back together and the albums coming out Done with Mirrors so I picked it up I, I had it on cassette loved the album still loved the album so um, you know and I wasn't that steeped in the classic Aerosmith at the time so at this show was the first time I ever heard the song Rats in the Cellar and I'm like what fucking song is this it is my favorite fucking Aerosmith song from now till the time I die which it still is you know and I went and it's it's on it's on rocks yep um just an absolute phenomenal album and great way to open the show and um I've seen Aerosmith several times since then and they've never played that song at any other show I've been to but uh, just a killer show. Like I said, Ted Nugent opened up, and um, just a fantastic night. Great win on the mound, and then great concert afterwards. Awesome fucking day. It's another band I've yet to see. I did see Joe Perry uh, with Hollywood Vampires, but I've not seen Aerosmith in its entirety. You've probably seen them, right, BB? <sighs> it's all yeah. getting fuzzy. All right. The older I get, yeah. It, you're like you'll say, "Hey, do you remember seeing Black Sabbath at Harvey's Lake?" I'll be like, "What?" By That's you know where what the I mean? BB Lean came in. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, it's getting. Fu- I have. A, I get it's it's getting fuzzy. I have a mind for that shit though. Like, ask me, ask me what my wife told me fucking twenty minutes ago. No idea. No idea. But I can tell right. you what concerts I went to and when. Not so much on the dates, but the only reason I know the dates is because I looked them up. And and I did get to see Aerosmith on the next tour for Permanent Vacation with Guns N' Roses opening up for them and. This show was better. Mm. It was better. Um, all right, BB. All right. Uh, you should have said fucking Woodstock for last. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. Anything now is going to be a letdown. It is. I doubt it. Come on. It's, it's a concert. It's live music. It's going to be great. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to end my list with uh, a show that BC and I went to back in May 7th, 2014. Black Label Society, of course, at the... Electric Factory in Philadelphia. What we, what me and BC like to talk about about this show is, uh, if anybody out there listening has been to the Electric Factory, it's almost like a like an L shaped, like there's the uh, the floor and there's an L shaped bar above the floor. So BC and I and uh, another guy I work with, Rich, we were up there drinking, having a couple beers and. This one band comes out called Clutch, and we weren't very familiar with them. BC said I, I, he thought he heard maybe he knew like one song from them, but uh, we kind of watched them, and you know they were really good. They were they were impressive. They were different. They were like biker. They're almost like biker. There was like a little bit industrial. It's almost like bl- backwoods southern. They were all mixed up. They, like a good version of Black Label Society. <laughs> but not as good. I they were good, good but version. not as good. <laughs> but uh, they were great. They were fantastic. And uh, 
So we we grab another beer and they get done. We're like, all right, let's go. Here comes Black Label because we weren't we weren't hundred percent sure of of who was there, what was going on, because there was a band before them who, to this day, I still don't remember who it was. So that band opened. Then Clutch is like, oh, all right, well, the opening band, the opening band, and here we go. So we get down. Everybody kind of scatters. I'm like, where the fuck is everybody fucking scattering? Like, fucking Black Label's coming out in 20 minutes. Fucking gear, grab your two beers, take a piss, and fucking stand here. So we take our piss, grab our two beers, and we're like, there's like maybe, I'll say three, but we're probably like two and a half people from the stage. Like, we are dead center. <laughs> and who comes out but Children of Bodom? And by that time, the, the there's probably a, a sea of 20 rows of people behind us. So they start... And there is a mosh pit of craziness starting behind us. I look at BC, I'm like, we're going to fucking die tonight because <laughs> I thought we were going to get run over. The poor guy that I took, that I work with, I really think he shit himself because he was so fucking scared. <laughs> two cents. Two cents opened up. All right, well, that's how, that's probably about how much they were worth. In. That's how much they were worth because I don't remember them. But... uh. But Children of Bodom, fantastic. They were so different. They had well, the guy had one of those the key tar, the key tar. He and he was going to town and he had it upside down and like I couldn't take my eyes off that guy because it was like like so goofy and you mind blowing it all at the metal. same time. It's like I, and, and I just kept watching them and they were really they were really good. I was really surprised at them. But but when Black Label come on and you know being three rows from from C and Zach, it was just. Because I've I've seen them with Pride and Glory up the up at Montage, and I've I've seen them with Black Label up at Montage with the um, Osmos. Was it Os? No, not Os- um, on the Ozfest. Ozfest. So this was like the first Black Label show, super close that I, I saw him in. And uh, you know, being a humongous fan, he he didn't he didn't disappoint because he opened up my dying time. He played Overlord from. From that album, uh, "Pray to Dead" was another great one in the in this river about dying bag and his buddy, uh, "Blessed Hell Ride." I think this was so 20, 2014, So that's kind of around the catacombs of the Black Vanikin with um, with Chad Saliga on drums. So this is I don't because re- I I don't remember who was on drums, but. John DeServio was his was his bass player. I want to say Chad was there. I'm gonna to have to go back in pictures. I'm I'm 99 sure Chad was Chad was drumming for him on this show in, in 2014. He he might have been because he was the drummer when we saw him open for Priest. Yeah, at the Epitaph tour. Oh right, yeah. So he's he's probably yeah that, he's probably on on this. Like I said, I'll have to go back at the old pictures. But uh, just a great show, you know, with three guys, you know. It, you know, I, I know like Rush Rush is showing that you can do it with three guys. So just just a great musicianship that these three guys put together and just put out fifteen songs. It was just a great time. You know, and of course he had to do his, you know, fifteen minute guitar solo like we talked about Eddie doing his and yep. you know, but uh great list, great set list, a great mixture of like black label songs, you know, a couple hits they throw in and then they close it with Stillborn, which probably back then was their was their bigger bigger song of the day but uh mm-hmm. yeah maybe i should have saved the woodstock <laughs> for last now that you now that you, now that you talk about it but uh because but I mean, still that was a well, that was had, still a great show i, I caught a guitar pick and you, know. you, had, you had a near-death experience on both of the shows though that, true. that's true, true. <laughs> that is definitely so there true you go. <laughs> see now you reminded me that the electric factory was the site of my first experience with sold out tickets and not being able to get a ticket to a concert i really wanted to go to because Fall Out boy was reuniting and they were gonna. That, the Electric Factory was the closest place that they were gonna play. I was on right at the time that they went live, and they sold out like that. Oof. At least you weren't waiting in line. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> Same thing happened with My Chemical Romance years later. I would have went to that show. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that once this is all over and they actually start touring again, that we're able to get to a show because I really want to see My Chemical Romance again. Like, not again. For the first time. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing them. All right, Dylan, what do you got for the last one? Okay, I'm going to end off my list with another. I'm, I'm going to end it off with a twofer of disappointing shows. And <laughs> the, the, uh, the reason why they're grouped together is because they were both at the same venue, the FM Kirby Center. 
Granted, I've seen a ton of amazing shows at the Kirby Center. Alice Cooper, we've seen him many times at the Kirby Center. Rock the House, Dream Theater. They were fantastic, though. <laughs> yep, yep, that is. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, really, I really enjoy a lot of shows at the Kirby Center. It's a really good venue. However, these two shows were not the best. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about was the lesser, uh, like the more enjoyable, I'll say, of the two. Uh, Ace Freely. Uh, we went to go see him. Uh, Rob, our one of our Kiss crew buddies, came, uh, brought his son, and they met us there. And it was me, you, was BC. Mm-hmm. Me, you, and BC. Yeah. And we went to the show. And during the show, Ace seemed so sluggish. He seemed like and, behind. Uh, Ed Spangenberg uh, met us there, too. Yeah, that's right. Ed Spangenberg was there as well. Uh, he seemed so behind with the singing. like He was off time. And we were like, what the hell is going on here? And it was just it was just really weird. Like Rocket Ride would slow down. <laughs> it, and it was because it was fast, but then it slowed down at certain parts. Like it was baby wants she wants a rocket ride. She, and, <laughs> and we're like, what the hell's going on? We kinda of are looking at each other during the show. And then we're waiting for the awkward to happen because he goes off stage. He kinda of rushes off stage. Uh, and we're waiting and waiting and waiting and like twenty minutes pass. And there's a guy, like, on stage. He's conversing with somebody. The girl, remember, the girl came out. Yeah, like, yeah, she was, she was like, conversing with somebody in the front row. She's like, yeah, he's not coming back. And that kind of rippled through the crowd. And we were, like, fourth row or something. We yeah, were we, close. Were, we were pretty close. And we look back, and we see Rob, like, he was <laughs> power walking pissed. out of the venue. He was so bad. <laughs> um, and it turns out Ace had to go to the hospital for dehydration, oh, yeah. I think. And exhaustion. That's what they're and, saying. Yeah. Uh, so we were we were like we were pretty pissed off until we heard that he went to the hospital, but it was it was just a weird experience. It was because remember at one point he was like leaning against yeah, the was, amps in front of the drums, just it like was like it was holding him up and that was all he could do to to stand up. But it, it was so weird. And then the the worst show that I think I've seen in my life was Guitar Gods. Uh, it was a like a a tour that featured. It was supposed to feature Uli John Roth, but he couldn't get clearance to tour in America or something like that. Yeah, he couldn't get a work visa. But it had uh, Ron Bubble Fathal from Guns N' Roses, Gary Hoey, great blues guitarist, and Yngwie Malmsteen. There were there were like two people that opened up the show. The first one was was like an instrumental guy, but the second one was like a country. It was band. a country band, yeah. And they it was such a weird thing because you're expecting kind of a G3 situation where it's just going to be a shred fest all night. Yeah. And then they're going to come out and they're going to do an awesome couple songs together, the, these three guitar gods. And uh, I think Bumblefoot came on first, and they were having technical difficulties. So their his band started playing Maiden songs to keep the crowd entertained, and that was really fun. That was the best part of the fucking night. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bumblefoot played pretty well. well Gary Hoey was fucking awesome. But Gary, Gary Hoey was Gary Hoey was definitely the best person. He seemed really really just in tune with the band and with, with the crowd and his songs were fantastic. His playing was great. And then Yngwie comes on. And when I say for every one song Yngwie played, there was five minutes of setup between each song. I think it's not an exaggeration. Like he would <laughs> it was off brutal. It was every fucking song brutal. To and change guitars, to do whatever. And the bassist the poor guy oh. had to vamp and get the keep the crowd excited. He's hey, like, Let's hear from everybody! The like, oh, I felt bad for that guy. And, and the, the stage with yeah, the marshals. Yeah, I was just about to say the <laughs> stage. So normally you have the band spread out pretty pretty evenly across the stage. However, for Ingve, three quarters of the stage are Marshall Stacks and Ingve, and the one quarter is the bassist, the drummer, the keyboardist, the rhythm guitar. You like they're all here. shoved in the corner while. Yngwie gets his own thing. And all those stacks are... It's a KISS situation where all those stacks are fake. Guaranteed. Yeah, they're all um, And we're wait, we, like, stick around because we're waiting. And we're like, it's got to get better. The crowd's thinning <sighs> out behind us. Everybody's leaving. We're like, there has to be a moment where the rest of the guys are going to come out and they're going to play a song together. And eventually they did. They came out and they played Burn, Burn from Deep Purple. Mm-hmm. Really fun. It was a good song. Of course, the other two guitarists were forced with the other band. And they were there. It was the three quarters of the stage now with two extra guitarists, right. and Ingve still having his own space. And Ingve got the longest solo, and then the guys ran off stage, and it was another thirty minutes of Ingve. And at that point, we were just exhausted and tired of hearing the same. It was fucking quarter to one. When we got out of that show, and we left early. We didn't like they weren't finished. 
Oh, it was left. it was Dear fucking God. brutal. It was. There were maybe fifty people left when yeah. we left there. It was, and it was a pretty packed place kept, to begin with. Think it, it's got to get better. He's got to play a, a song with some vocals. Yeah. There's got to be playing the instrumentals. It was just kept going oh off my stage, God. It was in between each song to switch out guitars. And it's not like it was a George Lynch situation where he's coming out with a different kind of guitar. It was always the cream-colored Stratocaster right. with the scalloped fretboard. And he would literally go off stage five minutes in between each song. And he'd be tuning songs. his guitar. Dude, what the and fuck? It was like we were watching a, a garage band practicing, you know. <sighs> and the the poor bassist, uh, my heart goes out to him. I've never <laughs> felt so bad it was, for it, somebody on stage. He was gone off stage so much, it was almost like they restrung his guitar for every fucking song. <laughs> and, and you can see the bassist Seriously. back every time. He's like... Is he done yet? Okay, did you read his autobiography? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah that it was poor brutal. guy. It was, it was brutal. Bad. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was that was fucking torture <laughs> fest. Because like I like I said, you're like, okay, this is gonna get better. It's gonna get better. And it's it gonna never get did. better. It did not get fucking never did. better. It just got fucking more torturous. So that's why anytime somebody goes, Ingve Momstein, I, I I get flashbacks. <laughs> I, it's, it's bad. It was yeah. bad. Okay, my final show. Um, I, I, I talked a little bit about him with he uh, Ted Nugent. Um, I saw him at uh, the Rocky Glen Amusement Park, now a defunct amusement park, um, about maybe 20 miles from where we live. Um, June 14th, 1986. Fucking fantastic show. Sabotage opened up for him. Yes, Tom and Zeus, Sabotage. Fantastic. They were on the Fight for the Rock tour. They were fantastic. It, Chris Oliva was still alive, so, I mean, they were kick-ass. And then um, Ted was, he was touring with Aerosmith at the time, but when they had dates in between, he would play shows like this, like theater shows, and, like, this was at an amusement park in, like, a big, uh, like, a music hall. And, you know, got to see some great shows there, too. And um, his set list was freaking killer. Yank Me, Crank Me. Just with the doctor order, free for all, hey baby, painkiller, high heels in motion, storm trooping, snakeskin cowboys, weekend warriors, angry young man, tied up in love. Uh, he did a blues jam, take me away, great white buffalo, savage dancer, crazy ladies, little miss dangerous, motor city madhouse, stranglehold, and then um, cat scratch fever, and wang dang sweep hoon tang for an encore. And that was when he had, uh, when the album Little Miss Dangerous came out, the song Little Miss Dangerous was on Miami Vice. When Ted was played a drug dealer, I think on that episode, and um, it's a it's a it's a killer album, Little Miss Dangerous, and that's when the guy that is the guitar player in Ario Speedwagon that replaced Gary Rickrath, um, Dave Amato, was his other guitar player, and he sang a lot of these songs. He would sing the songs that Derek St. Holmes sang. And he would, and he sang a bunch of songs from the from the new album. So that's like a little Miss Dangerous. It's another album where Ted doesn't sing on the whole album. But I'll tell you what, it was a fantastic show. I mean, first time I got, well, actually, second time I got to see Ted because I got to see him open for Aerosmith. But the first time I got to see Ted in a full show, and that was he was, um, you know, thankfully out of the fucking loincloth by then. <laughs> um, you know, we were into the leather pants and shit then. But I'll tell you what, I mean. He just fucking tore it up. It was it was like an over two hour show. It was just kick ass. I went there with my old girlfriend and we went with a couple other people, but I can't remember who exactly it was. But um, great small venue, um, sounded fantastic. We were you know not right on the rail, but we were maybe five or six people back. So to see Ted play and he had the, the girl with the hot G string and shit come out to find out later that was his wife. She would come out. <laughs> And bring his guitars out to him and shit. She was fucking smoking hot. But just a, a great show. And, I mean, if you guys out there haven't checked out the Little Miss Dangerous album, check it out. It's it's typ typical album for the, uh, like, mid to late 80s. For time. But it's great. Like, songs like Painkiller, Take Me Away, um, Little, Little Red Book, the song Little Miss Dangerous, fucking fantastic. So just... Um, one of my favorite shows. I mean, one of the, you know, it wasn't a huge concert, but it was just a, another one of those intimate shows that you, you know, you remember. And I mean, it was 1986, so that was like over like like 35 years ago, but just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that Rocky Glen, man. I, I, I my actually my first concert was there. I think it was we were in sixth grade, so it's maybe 1985. Saw the outfield and the Hooters there. And it was just, and after that, it was like, boom, gone, done, no shows ever anymore. I'm like, 
That was so yeah. cool. They had the stage down there by the lake. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Yeah, we saw we saw Ted there. We saw Night Ranger there. Quiet Riot played there. Um, bon Jovi played there. Rat played there. Cinderella played there. So, I mean, this was like the early to mid-'80s. They had a right. ton of fucking great bands there. Yeah. And it was weird, too, because you had to walk – a long way from where you parked, you had to walk through the amusement park and then down, down this the hill, hill yep. by the lake. And it was a, it was a long way. I remember walking out of there after the, especially after the Night Ranger show. It was one of the hottest balls night. Just walking out of there, you're just shot, and you have to walk. I don't know, half a mile, quarter of a mile to your to your car. But uh, it was just a, one of those great old venues that you know we saw a ton of shows for, and you know, in the blink of an eye, it was it was gone. But um, just uh, fantastic. So. Uh, let me read BC. I read two of BC's, right? Yep. So let me read um, BC's other two shows that he has. Um, he has surprise opener for Rat. We saw them in 1999. I talked about that before. The band Hair of the Dog, that our buddy Ryan Spencer Cook was the leader of that band. They had fantastic three albums out. Yeah, so they have the Big Bones album out, which is the greatest hits of their three albums. They have a, not hits. I mean, they didn't really have any hits, but like the compilation of songs from their first three albums. Soon to be on vinyl. Soon to be on vinyl. And uh, we're hoping to get Ryan to come on to talk about the, that album. And um, and BC's last. What do, what do you think BC's last one's going to be, BB? Uh, uh, no, well, since mine was Black Label, I'm sure his was like Lizzie Borden. It was. He uh, said the first time yeah. he got to see Lizzie Borden, which I, I always, it's always one of my favorite things to see a band that either I love or someone else really loves to see it with them, with me, or me with them the first time they get to see them. Right. So we got to see Lizzie Borden. We went to New York City. Uh, me, him, and Granza, I think, went. And we saw we, we saw them. They, they opened up. It was Exodus and then... Was it Exodus? No, that was a King Diamond show. Um, I forget the, the first opening band, but then it was Lizzie Borden and then... Um, God, I'm fucking demons and wizards. Demons and wizards. There, there it is. Mm. And but it was cool. We got the we got the blood and everything it was fucking <laughs> awesome. So uh, I was. Was that at the PlayStation Theater? The yeah. Best Buy Theater, whatever. Like it's the, I think it's the Sony, the Sony Theater Sony now. Theater, yeah. yeah, yeah. Same place we got to see King Diamond twice. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, but it was a cool show. I was I, I I love that when I get to see a band with with someone like for the first time. Like I said, either myself or or their first show. But uh, so there's our live shows, guys out there. Let us know what your, uh, give us four of your favorite live shows, and if you know if you want to give us a little, you know, it, you know, because you might have been at a show that something happened that is famous for a band that you know yeah. were you at the uh, your Iron Maiden my story. Iron Maiden one. I was yeah. if uh, it's a B side on one of the uh, songs they have, Mission for Mary, where they got into an argument after the show that they played at Allentown, Pennsylvania. I was at that show. If you I were mean, at the show where James Hetfield got burned, <laughs> and then the riot got yeah, started from yeah. Guns N' Roses. Yeah, let us know for sure, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, we'll go, we'll go around um, and just uh, we'll say our goodbyes and we'll get out of here, guys. Yeah, great topic. You know, so many great memories. You know, we can do nine thousand episodes of just talking about shows that we that we've gone to, the amazing memories that we've made. But let me tell you. Halfway through this, and you know, you're talking about talking about the Foo Fighters, and talk about Ted, and you know, Aerosmith. You know, I'd fucking take anything right now. <laughs> I almost forget what it. And it's like, like it's al- it's almost like one of those things that you kind of took for granted. Now that it's taken away, you're like, Jesus, I'd fucking go see like Seven Mary Three or. Any like the Dixie Chicks or something? They're just, the, just the chicks. I go see the chicks, <laughs> not the ones that spin around the pole. Just the chicks. It's just one of those things that you you know you take so much for granted, and then when they take it away from you, you're like, man, I fucking miss that. But and I'm sure everybody out there is like that. And uh, some great topics, some great memories, some great shows. You know, I I hope people out there you know interact with this because I'd love to hear some stories about. You know, the concerts that they've been to because there's just so many out there. It's such a great time, great topic. I love your picks. This was this was really fun to talk about. It's nice reliving all the concerts that we went to, the good or the bad, because they, you, whatever happens at the concert, you, you get a good story out of it, which I, I find really enjoyable because 
BB survived almost a, <laughs> a massacre. <laughs> there were a lot of assaults apparently at that show, which it's yeah. lucky that uh, you didn't get a uh, anything you didn't get attacked. <laughs> but I, I I find it really cool to listen to shows that stick out in people's minds as iconic for good or for bad, and hearing everybody's different genres that they've got to because we we went from Foo Fighters to Ted Nugent to you know all over the place. Crazy. Uh, Cheryl Crow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, this was a really fun episode. I, I, I had so many more concerts that I could have mentioned that uh, it would be cool to revisit for sure down the road. Right. And and that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to kind of spring it on you guys because I didn't want everybody putting too much thought into it. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be uh, as spontaneous as possible because I wanted to at least give you a chance to, if you wanted to look up a set list or a date, that you were you had enough time to do that, and I literally sprung it on him an hour before we showed up to record, and and I honestly didn't pick mine until like maybe an hour before that. So it was it was fun to to do and to talk about. And like I said before, like for me, a lot of times the the music and the bands are secondary. It's just hanging with your friends. Uh, my I'm very fortunate that both of my sons, you know, um, like. You know, they don't like all the shit that I like, and I don't like all the shit that they like, but we do have common ground that I that I was able to see Metallica with Dylan. And Notice how he didn't mention any of those shows in the episode. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> He's saving those for the next one. Disclaimer. All the um, pre-Suds shows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it, you know, and I got this, you know, and I, I, I saw Hinder and you know Event Sevenfold with with Carson. Nickelback. So and Nickelback and say what you want about Nickelback. When I saw them, they were fucking great. They were fucking excellent. They put on a good show. Um, you know, like I said, their newer stuff not so much, but like I like the common ground, and I like that. Um, you know, this is like another thing that binds us together as friends and, you know, people that we interact with and friends that we have, other podcasters. You know, we could just sit down and just talk about concerts that you went to for, for days, for fucking days. I mean, I've been going to concerts since 1983, and I don't think there's been a year where I haven't gone to a show yet, including this year. Because right. we did the Monsters of Rock, and then, right. then Jeff Tate was the last band that I saw before everything shut down. So, um, and I, I'm sure we'll at least have some kind of live music next year because I know the stuff's already going out for the, the Kiss Kiss Cruise 10 and for the Monsters of Rock Cruise. So I'm sure we'll be able to have some live music and some symbols. And there's still there's shows going on now. We just, Steel Panther just Steel played Panther here at our, at our theater, which I was working that night and BB was gone away and... BC was working on his house, so we didn't, you know, get to go to see that. But it was a social distancing thing where they played at a drive-in, and you were at your car, and there were spaces in between the cars and shit. Um, everybody's seen them online, so I mean, there still are live shows out there. Um, so you know, just use your head, you know, be cool, and uh, you know, we'll we'll be we'll be back we'll rocking together again. We'll get there. So uh, yeah, so guys, let us know. You know what shows you've gone to? You know, were you at any of the shows we talked about? I mean, I know we have some, uh, you know, a lot of listeners that are from our area here. Um, you know, and I know that you know, guys that we have on the show, we've been to shows with Grands, we've been to shows with Scott, we've been to shows with Rob, and we've been to shows with uh, with with Mo that came on. You know, what I mean, yeah. so like you know, we 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 that that's our thing. It's our it's our way of life here. So, um, you know, check out our Spotify playlist that Dylan will so graciously put on the show notes, and you'll hear songs from the bands we talked about tonight. Yep. Uh, maybe Dylan will even throw a Cheryl Crow song in there, maybe. Ooh, maybe. Absolutely. Maybe. Insane Clown Posse. Put, put, put Gasoline on there. That's a fucking great Cheryl Crow song. Although that wasn't out when, when Woodstock went, though. It was a, a later yeah, song. Do Don't forget the roots. Yeah. We got the roots. Yeah, yeah the roots. Yeah. yeah. So, That's uh, going to be a, a running tally. We already got the roots two roots. weeks. Yeah. <laughs> was I here when we talked about them? Yeah. We, I talked about how uh, I saw them at a show. Yeah, last episode because we were talking about Grant. They were nominated for a Grammy. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> I must block out shit like that. All right, roots are good. They're solid. Oh yeah. All right. So check out the roots too. <laughs> and if you're a roots fan, uh, email them. So all right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. We love interacting with you guys. Um, you know, uh, jump on iTunes. We'd appreciate a five star review. It helps get our podcast out there more. It associates us with um, different podcasts and stuff like that. And, 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 you know, here's a weird thing real quick. Um, I was going, I was uh, just seeing our, our show on Spotify the other day, and I looked, and we're marked down as comedy. 
podcast <laughs> on Spotify. I think it's all the laughter that happens. I'm like, that I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm like, we talk. I mean, I know we have a good time, and but like, there's a lot we're, of we're laughs. Literally, but we're literally under the the category of comedy. On, oh, all on right, Spotify. so. Uh, a dog walks into a bar. What's the deal? Yeah. They're playing food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I thought I'd just throw that out there. So uh, thanks, guys, for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you're a new listener, go back, listen to our old, old episodes. We're almost 170 episodes in. And, you know, every one of them, there's something, you know, different for everybody. And, you know. Especially for those comedy fans. Especially for yes. the comedy fans, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. So you know, yeah, maybe we'll maybe see if we can get Andrew Dice Clay on here some night. Yeah, <laughs> hickory dickory duck, this chick. Ah. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for thanks for tuning in, you guys. Everybody, stay safe out there. Have a great week, and uh, we love you guys. Take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you next time. And there definitely will be a next time.